So you've downloaded and got yourself some nice freeware scenery or perhaps a payware aircraft. Loaded into Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's not there. If you've had this problem, this video may be of some assistance. Welcome to part 3, my Microsoft Flight Simulator Essential series. If you'd like to watch the other videos in this series, link in the notes below to the playlist. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. my name's Mark, thank you very much for watching and let's get started. If you want to successfully install anything into Microsoft Flight Simulator, there's one critical piece of information you need to know, and that is the location of your community folder. I'm not going to dwell long on this point, as it's already been extensively covered, and typical locations are detailed in the notes below the video. What's important is not where you think it is, but the path being used by Microsoft Flight Simulator. And there's one surefire way to check. In SIM from the main menu, we're going to select Options, and then General Options. From the menu on the left, we're going to select Developers, and we're going to turn that on. And when we do, a small menu appears on the top left-hand side. And from here, we're going to select Tools, and then Virtual File System. Click on that. From the submenus presented, we're going to select Packages Folders, and we'll be presented with two options. Open the official folder or open the community folder. Select that and your community folder will be opened. And here you can take note of the drive, path and directory being used to your community folder. You can do likewise for the official folder. What is the official folder? This is where default add-ons such as aircraft, scenery etc are stored as well as anything installed from the marketplace normally including third-party products as well, subject to them being purchased again through the marketplace. Never delete or add items here. If you want to remove something, use the uninstall or install via the Content Manager. I mentioned this folder just for your info. Highly recommended you leave it alone. Once you've confirmed the location of your community folder, turn Developer Mode off, Apply and Save, and we can now move on. Chances are that you've already installed Microsoft Flight Simulator and the path to your community folder is already defined. I do recommend, however, the best option is during the initial install to define a location other than the default for your community folder. You are given that option. That way you'll always know where it is. In my case, I've put it on my D drive as I've got lots of space, plus it's an NVMe drive, so it's very fast. This means for me, less loading time. Let's now download a file and install it into Microsoft Flight Simulator. One of my favorite developers, Bagaloo, I've just put his name in the search option. And as an example, we'll just download something from him. In this example, I'm using one of my favorite sites for freeware. It's flightsim.to, links in the notes below. And I'm going to download and install the Cessna 172SP Skyhawk Improvement Mod. It's freeware and it's absolutely stunning and amazing. I did a review on this package, highly recommended, and once again links in the notes below if you're interested. I'll select that, the details pop up, I'm now going to select download, and it will download into my downloads folder in Windows. If you do download freeware fairly frequently from sites such as flightsim.to, make sure you create an account, and this will keep a list of all your downloads. Check periodically because there are very often updates, and it is very important for future sim update and world updates that your freeware is kept up to date. Very often, CTDs or crash to desktops experienced by users are simply because their freeware is so out of date. It's worth a check. Here is my downloaded file in my downloads folder. I could extract the zip file directly here, but it's always a good idea to save this file elsewhere on your computer for future reference and in case you ever need to rebuild your community folder. Do not cut and paste this file directly into your community folder and then unzip it. The download will not be seen and the chances are you're extending load times and likely to crash your SIM. We can now copy or paste the downloaded zip file. In my case, it's on my E drive, is where I store all my add-ins. 
I've already created a directory for the download file, so I'll open that and paste the zip file there. And now I can go ahead and unzip the file. To unzip it, I'm just using the Windows default. It asks if I want it in this directory, which I do. Click OK and the file will unzip. Done. And it is here where most of the errors take place because you inadvertently moved the wrong directory to the community folder. There's the zip file and the unzip directory. Within the unzip directory is another folder, Bagaloo C172 patch. And when I open that, I see that this folder has the contents, including content info and sim objects. If you move this folder or directory into the community folder, you won't see your install. The directory that you do move to your community folder should be the one directly above the one that contains the content info and sim objects. In this case, the Bagaloo C172 patch. That's the directory we want. We'll copy that. If you'd previously installed the download, it's good practice to delete the one in the community folder first. Now in the community folder, and I'm going to select paste. And the Bagaloo C172 patch. There it is. It's now in the community folder and it's the correct directory. We can now jump back into Sim and check that it's installed correctly. One last important point to mention is make sure you have the latest version that you're installing into the Sim. Particularly with Sim updates, this can have a big impact in terms of visibility as well as usability of the particular add-on. If it's scenery you've installed, you'd need to go to that particular airport to check it out. If it's an aircraft, well, that's much easier. We've just installed the 172. Let's see if it's recognized. There it is. So we can assume at this point it's been a correct and full install. This particular install only affects one livery, and that's correct. We can now select that aircraft and go and enjoy our freeware download in Sim. If you've followed all these steps and it's still not visible, well, you need to contact the developer directly. We can be quite often tempted to take a shortcut here and there. But if the wrong directory is in the wrong folder, then your download simply will not be active in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There are a number of third-party applications which can manage add-ons for you, but to cover those today is beyond the scope of this video. Well, I hope to at least some extent this has been useful to you and will help you resolve some of the potential problems you may encounter in the future. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon and bye for now.